So you can't just sit down and write a story. You have to plan to write it. And that's what I'm doing. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and a master educator, and I'm here to provide you with the best in our historical content. If you like this video, make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all those things that you do when you really enjoy uh, a thing like this. And keep in mind, it's absolutely free at no cost to you. So you might as well, uh, follow along. Let's get this thing moving! What the hell's your problem? Shut your pie hole! We're working here! One of the great American regionalists was an artist by the name of Edward Hopper. Edward Hopper created some of the greatest American regionalist type paintings. Specifically, of the loneliness of the city, the New York, and that sort of thing. We can look at examples like this one here. This is called Nighthawks, and Nighthawks is one of his most iconic paintings. We might not be able to recognize the title or the year it was made, or even that Edward Hopper himself was the artist, but most of us have seen this painting. We've seen a parody of the painting. We've, we've got some recognition of it, and there are many artists that are influenced by Edward Hopper. And one of those genres or niches of, of artists are filmmakers. And there are several filmmakers that are very much influenced by painters. So today on Art 101 with Mr. Berger, and as you know, because you clicked on the video, we're going to explore 11 different theatrical movies that have definitely been influenced by the artwork of Edward Hopper. So, without further, here we go. Now there are several movies that have been influenced by the artworks of Edward Hopper and we're going to run through some of those in fairly short order. The Naked City, 1948, is a Jules Dessen film noir type film with an IMDb rating of 8.2 out of 10 and 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. The film is almost exclusively shot in New York City based upon a police investigation of a murdered model. Because of the setting and the time frame that it represents, paintings like Automat from 1927 and Chop Suey from 1929 very much influenced the overall product. And we see a lot of the representations of the city portraying New York City just like Edward Hopper had painted it. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. Rear Window from 1954 is a mystery film by Alfred Hitchcock. It has an IMDb rating of 8.5 out of 10 and a 98% Rotten Tomatoes rating. James Stewart plays a voyeuristic photographer who's checking out Grace Kelly through the windows and believes that he witnesses a murder. But at any rate, Alfred Hitchcock is very much influenced by Edward Hopper's various paintings such as Night Windows from 1928 and Room in New York from 1932. This film was nominated for four Academy Awards and is ranked 42 on AFI's Top 100 Movies. Want to look? No, thanks. I don't want any part of it. Blade Runner 1982 was a Ridley Scott sci-fi action film that was nominated for two Academy Awards. It has an IMDb rating of 8.1 out of 10 and 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. The set design is very much influenced by Edward Hopper's Nighthawks from 1942. Although this is set in the future and it doesn't really look like a Depression era type setting, the light and the contrast that we find in the movie sets were very much influenced by Edward Hopper's use of design in his various paintings. Part of the business. I'm 
I'm not in the business. Hard Times 1975 was directed by Walter Hill. And this is a sports drama of a Depression-era boxer that is portrayed by Charles Bronson. It has an IMDb rating of 7.2 out of 10 and 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. There are many Depression-era images created by Edward Hopper that very much would influence Walter Hill's choices in the direction and very much influence the end product. You just mark this one down to research. Part of your education. Shadow of Doubt was made in 1943, which is a psychological thriller by Alfred Hitchcock. It was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Story. It has an IMDb rating of 7.8 out of 10 and a 100% Rotten Tomatoes rating. This film is very much influenced by Edward Hopper's images as it depicts various locations. Alfred Hitchcock was very much influenced by the Hodgkin's house from 1928 as a major influence. The windows, the doors, the placement of characters was also very much influenced by Edward Hopper like the painting Summertime from 1943. Side note, Shadow of Doubt was Alfred Hitchcock's favorite Alfred Hitchcock movie. It was nothing. Just, just some gossip. Road to Perdition is a 2002 Sam Mendes mobster movie with an IMDb rating of 7.7 .7 out of 10 and a Rotten Tomatoes rating of 81%. There are many examples of locations and light and various expressions that we find depicted in the film that are very similar to those that we find in Edward Hopper's various paintings, including New York Movie from 1939. Mike. Just give me the names. Tell me who to visit. True Stories from 1986. David Bryan from the Talking Heads served as the director of this tabloid-inspired film from the fictitious Virgil, Texas town. It has a 7.2 out of 10 rating on IMDb and 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. It shows various observations of characters and places that were very much influenced by Edward Hopper and his various ideas. But this place is completely normal. Anyway. Blue Velvet from 1986 is a David Lynch neo-noir mystery thriller. It has an IMDb of 8.8 .8 out of 10 and 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. This film gained Lynch a nomination as Best Director from the Academy Awards. David Lynch mentioned that Edward Hopper and Francis Bacon both very much influenced the film's direction and both of these artists' use of light and shadow and their effects on color had a profound impact on how this film ended up looking. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, swap. Psycho from 1960, another Alfred Hitchcock psychological thriller, has an IMDb rating of 8.5 out of 10 and a 96% Rotten Tomatoes rating. This film was nominated for four Academy Awards, including Alfred Hitchcock as Best Director and Lee for Best Supporting Actress. Alfred Hitchcock is very much influenced by the location type paintings of Edward Hopper and he was very much influenced by House by the Railroad Tracks from 1925 which serves as the model for the Bates House on top of the hill. Side note, House by the Railroad is also the inspiration for the Benedict family house from the 1956 film Giant. A man should have a hobby. Well, it's... It's, it's more than a hobby. The Alienation Trilogy by Michelangelo and Tony, created between 1960 and 1962. This Italian director created this series of three films based upon various ideas of modern times, disconnects, lack of communication, estrangement, and loneliness. These are very much ideas that Edward Hopper wrestled with in his own paintings, including New York Movie from 1939, Couple in the Summer Evening, 1947, and Sunlight in the Cafeteria from 1958.
Hammett from 1982 is a Wim Wenders neo-noir mystery. It has an IMDb rating of 6.4 out of 10 and 77% on Rotten Tomatoes. This is a story of a detective investigating a prostitute's death. Early drawings by Edward Hopper very much influenced the look of this film, including Night Shadows from 1921. But this is not the only Wenders film that was influenced by Hopper. We can also see his effects in films such as Paris, Texas, The American Friend, The End of Violence, and Don't Come Knocking. There are lots and lots of films that are very much influenced by the visual arts. Basically, it's a visual art influencing a visual art. Various forms of cinematographers are very much influenced by the visual arts, whether those are sculptors, painters, or various forms of fine artists that are out there. And there are also occasions where fine artists are helping create cinematography. And hopefully this opens your eyes to the influence that Edward Hopper's paintings had on some really great American and international films. Scholars, I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I love bringing those to you. Today we talked a little bit about this. Next time we can talk about any one of a number of subjects. Drop me a line or a comment and I'll be happy to, uh, to get back with you on uh, the direction you'd like to go. Until next time, you have yourselves a good day. I haven't had that much fun since I let Rick James braid my hair.